Killers of the Flower Moon, packed into a thrilling three and a half hour movie, is actually based on real events. While this condensed cinematic masterpiece is winning hearts worldwide, few are aware that it's grounded in a true story that's even wilder than the film. In this video, we will get deep into the shadows of the past, revealing the shocking true story that's the very base of this movie. So stick around for a wild ride into history's unknown corners and know the unknown. So, famous movie director Martin Scorsese teamed up with his friends Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro for his latest film. Killers of the Flower Moon. This crime story tells about a series of murders that happened in Oklahoma during the 1920s, in the Osage Nation Reservation. Similar to other famous movies by Scorsese like Raging Bull, Goodfellas, The Aviator and The Wolf of Wall Street, this new film is inspired by a real story. It's based on a non-fiction book by David Gran, and it's been playing in theatres since October 2023. Since its big debut at the Cannes Film Festival, the movie has gotten lots of praise from critics and is already being talked about for the Oscars next year. The story behind the Osage murders is complicated and huge. The Osage Nation, a Native American tribe originally from the Great Plains, had to leave their Kansas homelands and settle in northeastern Oklahoma during the late 19th century. This new land wasn't much to boast about. It was rocky, barren, and seemed worthless. That was until the 1890s, when one of the largest oil reserves in the US was discovered there. Suddenly, the Osage found themselves rolling in money by the 1920s, collectively amassing over $400 million in today's currency. They lived a life of luxury, building grand mansions, owning cars with chauffeurs, hiring staff, and sending their kids to private schools. But they weren't just lucky. The Osage were shrewd in securing their wealth. They knew about the oil riches on their land long before big oil companies caught on. They bought vast sections of land, isolating themselves from white settlers and waiting for the oil rush to start. In 1921, Congress set up a guardianship system, thinking the Osage couldn't handle their wealth. The government attempted to assimilate the Osage, forcing their children into American schools. English speaking, and Christianity, typical of that era's Native American treatment. The government also controlled their spending, appointing overseers to manage their finances. They decided only the Osage members who were good with money, sober, and all about Christian values could get their total payments. Everyone else got a cap of $4,000 a year. To show they were good enough, the Osage had to prove they were smart with cash, stayed sober, and accepted Christian beliefs. When a guardian was appointed for an Osage member, it was usually some hotshot lawyer or a big real estate mogul. These guardians took a cut from the Osage folks' money as payment for their services. They even used the money meant for the Osage to buy stuff for themselves. Who'd notice all that cash moving around? During this period, local law enforcement was lacking, leaving murder investigations to inexperienced locals or, for the wealthy, private detectives like the Pinkertons. These investigators went to great lengths, sometimes bending the law to open up layers of lies and corruption surrounding the Osage murders. After a short duration, Agent Tom White, who was an American law officer and former Texas Ranger, along with his skilled team of investigators, started uncovering the complex plot behind the series of deaths among the Osage. They soon discovered a web of corruption centered around the Guardians tasked with overseeing the wealth of the Osage individuals. These supposed protectors were dipping their hands into the Osage cookie jar, swiping a whopping $8 million from their wards. And guess what? The rot didn't stop there. This whole mess was seemingly a bigger scandal than anyone thought. Judges, lawyers, docs, and those big shot businessmen across Oklahoma, yes, they were all part of this tangled web of deceit. It's shocking, right? These respectable figures who were supposed to be upholding justice and looking out for the Osage folks were instead involved in snagging their hard-earned cash. At the same time, many white people were also feeling hatred because they believed the Osage were unworthy of such vast riches. Some saw the federal government's generous gift of valuable land as a stroke of luck. One famous individual who felt jealousy was William Hale. Being Ernest Buckhart's relative, he was well-connected and held significant authority. Although the Osage viewed Hale as an ally, he was involved in a sinister plot. Hale had evil plans, even though he seemed to be on the side of the Osage. Hale nudged his nephew Burkhardt to tie the knot with Molly Kyle, a native woman. Soon after, things got wild. Tragedy struck the Kyle family. Molly's kin started dropping like flies. Anna Brown got shot. 
Lizzie Q was poisoned, and there was even a mysterious explosion that claimed lives. Curiously, each death made Burke Hart and Kyle richer. That was highly fishy business. But hold on, it didn't stop there. Other Osage Nation members faced similar fates, suspicious deaths one after another. William Hale made a ton of money from these terrible murders. He got around $25,000 from the life insurance of one Osage man who was killed. But that's not all. He used a fake note to claim another $6,000 from the estate of another Osage man who had just passed away. The people who were killed weren't random. They were chosen very carefully. The plan was to ensure that all the land with loads of oil would end up belonging to Molly Burkhart. So when these people were murdered, their land rights were supposed to pass to Molly. Hale wasn't done yet. He wanted all that land for his nephew, Ernest. So he had a plan to get rid of Molly too. That's when things got really serious. Agent White found out that Molly was in danger. She was seeing doctors who were working for Hale. These doctors were giving her insulin shots for her diabetes. But instead of getting better, Molly was getting sicker. It turns out those doctors were slowly poisoning her, all because Hale wanted her out of the picture. Luckily, Agent White stepped in just in time. He got Molly away from those doctors and into a hospital where she got better immediately. If it wasn't for Agent White's intervention, Molly would have been another victim of these horrible crimes. After the FBI gathered all the proof they needed against Hale, the trial that followed became a big deal. In 1926, Hale, Burkhart, and their friends got the cuffs slapped on them. By then, more than two dozen souls had met their end. Ernest Burkhart, Hale's nephew, spilled the beans in the courtroom. He admitted that his uncle Hale was the mastermind behind the plan to make money from murdering Osage people. Burkhart even admitted that he hired someone to kill one of the victims, all because of his uncle's instructions. But in court, things got pretty wild. After chatting briefly with Hale's lawyers, Ernest took back his words. Then he changed his mind again and said he was guilty. Hale, on the other hand, claimed that the FBI agents had used some really harsh tactics to make people confess, like threats and even electric shocks. It created some big shockwaves in politics and the media demanded that Agent White be taken off the case. But guess what? It turns out Hale's story didn't hold water. It was all a bit of a drama. When it was clear that the first trial of William Hale wasn't fair, they had to do it all over again. This time they found him guilty of first degree murder. Burkhardt was eventually pardoned in 1965, and Hale was paroled in 1947. And get this, before they got caught, they even tried to poison Molly Kyle. Ernest also got a life sentence. Ernest's wife, Molly, couldn't believe what her husband had done. She divorced him completely horrified and moved on to a brighter chapter. Now, Agent White, the FBI guy, left his job to become the prison warden where they put Hale. The Osage people called these murders the Reign of Terror. The author who wrote about it, David Gran, figured out that Hale might not have been the only one involved. There could have been more people like him who killed Osage people just for money. The sad part is that we might never really know how much damage this reign of terror caused in terms of lives and wealth. Now, what do you guys think about this story and the movie based on it? Do share your thoughts in the comment section to extend the chat and don't forget to check out the channel for more interesting videos.